Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be getting our little introduction video into regression analysis. And this is going to be the first step into working towards predicting our fantasy output from different players. So we can start to make our own projections to include in our optimizer and any other analysis we do. If we're using uh, any other sources of projections, we can use those as well. Um, this is kind of going to be our conceptual overview to kind of get a feel for what regression is, how it works, why we use it, um, and, and importantly, we're going to be getting into a little bit of the discussion, and this is kind of a, an overarching discussion with this type of stuff. There's no right answer, but in order to have a, a good good model, it needs to be general, right? And you need to have a general predictive model. If you get too specific, then it, it tends to get get a little wonky and doesn't doesn't perform very well. But if you're too general, it doesn't give you enough insight. So especially for something like daily fantasy sports, we need to be general enough to have a functional model while being specific enough that it's valuable to us. Um, and we're going to hop in here a minute and just kind of look at some line of best fits. Don't worry, we're not going to be getting too far into the math stuff. Um, keep it some basic algebra level, and I know not everyone um, has a good math background, strong math background, whatever. It's not a problem. Uh, we're going to be going over it very simply today. The concepts are not hard to understand. Um, it, it's just basically going to be a visual representation of what we're going to be doing with the data going forward. See, I don't worry about it too much. Real quick, before we get into the nuts and bolts, we do have a, a couple of quick announcements, just kind of big picture channel wide. First off, Tuesday afternoons are going to be when I try to get my videos released every week. Um, I know I had, didn't release one last week because so I was getting prepped to make sure we were ready to go for all of this because I had a little bit of stuff I had to get done to be ready for that. But going forward, we're going to be a vi one video a week. It's going to be Tuesday afternoons, Eastern time for me. Um, so if you're on the West Coast or elsewhere outside of the United States, it's probably not going to be in the afternoon, maybe not even on Tuesday for you. But that's when will be my time, so just so everybody knows. On top of that, I have had several of you reach out. Um, looking for ways to support the channel, and I greatly appreciate that. I really do. I am working on getting a Patreon set up for those of you that have the means and wish to contribute financially to the well-being of the channel. That will allow me to, one, dedicate a little more time to this type of stuff, but don't feel like you need to. It's 100% optional if you want to. I'm working on figuring out different, you know, reward tier levels as Patreon has it set up. So it's nothing that'll be out in the next day or two, but maybe in the next couple of weeks I'll have that ready to put out. Um, and there, there'll be a range of, of, you know, commitment sizes. So if you just want to throw, you know, five bucks a month, that's, that helps more than you know. Or if you have the means and you want more and you want to get more out of it, then there'll be higher tiers as well with some more specialized rewards as, uh, to go along with that. So again, completely optional. Don't feel pressured to. If you have the means and you want to, that's going to be a good way to help keep things rolling around here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop in and start talking about regression a little bit. So I've got a simple plot drawn here in, uh, in Microsoft Paint. We're using the expensive tools today. Um, so one important thing to realize is these regression models are basically just creating a series, an equation or a series of equations to model the data. So it's not, it's not, it, it's not working like your brain is where you can like, you're seeing the trends and you think, oh, based on that, I'm going to go up here even if there's no past data to, to support that. These models are explicitly going to take the past data and the training aspect of building your model is taking those past data points and seeing the, the end result or the fantasy points they scored that day based on the data that was fed in and basically find a calculation of however many variables you have that's going to output that value or at least be close. Because again, it's going to be general. It's not going to be too specific. So one easy way to think of that is creating a line of best fit. Now, obviously, with this data set here, there's only two variables, the x and the y variable. 
we're going to be using more variables than that. It would be, you know, too many dimensions of data for us to visualize it like this. Once you get past three, good luck, right? So this is going to be a very, very simplified. This would be if we took like for a clustering example, we did the principal component analysis and we broke all that data down into, I think 13 variables. It was 17, something like that. If we broke it all down into two variables, we could plot something like this and we could draw our own line of best fit. I don't recommend doing that unless you just want to, you know, for the sake of having done it to understand it. Great. But in practice, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. You'd be losing a whole lot of information by dropping it down to two variables. But the point of the line of best fit is exactly what it is. It is the, a, a straight line. So no, you know, no parabolas, nothing like that. Just a straight line that best fits this data. So looking at this, you know, we've got a nice spread here. Let's say X is the game and Y is the number of fantasy points they have or whatever, you know, the minutes they played versus fantasy points. I don't know. Whatever you want it to be. Imagine it's that. A line of best fit is going to be a line that ideally cuts the data directly in half. So if we draw a line there, in theory, for every value down each of these points are from the line, if you add them all up, you should get pretty much the same value up here uh, for all of the values above the line. Now, this was not calculated, this is just drawn in to give you an example. But as you can see, that's not going to be the best for predicting fantasy points, because that essentially means that for each of these scenarios, where each of these are, we would have predicted those values right along this line, right? And that's where you don't want to be too general. You want to have a model that's specific enough that it, it, it's, it can be validated within your data set. Because <clears throat> let, let's say, for instance, you know, all these players down here are bench players, and these players are starters up here. Okay, that, that makes sense. <clears throat> we would want to separate those out. So if instead, here, let's take away our line, and let's separate that data right here. So let's say these are all bench players and these are all starters. Okay, now each one of them would have a line of best fit. And these are gonna be a lot more accurate. This one looks like it's gonna be right across the middle there. And this one is probably gonna be right around there. Now pretend those are straight lines and I, I have steady enough hands to draw straight lines, which I don't, but let's pretend we do. These are gonna be much more accurate than our first one was, right? Because look, you know, we're even when we're off, we're like there's a maximum level of off that we are, and it's not a lot. Down here, it gets a little more spread, and, and you could you could break these down and more, and you could have four sections here instead of two, like that. It's that balance of general and specific that you'll need to find for each data set in each model, and that's where a lot of the skill comes into this type of work is really the data prep and understanding what data you have and how to feed it into your model. Getting the data, picking a model, <clears throat> that's easy. You literally would go just go to sklearn. You know, we've, we've imported that, some modules from sklearn last week or two weeks ago with the clustering. And you would just pick a regression model and run it, and you're done. But does it give you anything valuable? Probably not. And so it, it takes a lot of thought and a lot of trial and error to build this type of model that's actually going to work well. Um, but that, that's all it is, is that that general versus the specific is going to be uh, something we keep coming back to. I've already said it like five times in this video already. That's going to keep happening as we go on because it's very important. We're going to move on. One of the type, the type of model we're going to start with, because I think it's probably the easiest to understand conceptually, because uh, it really doesn't get that complex. It's pretty easy, but it's very powerful. The type of model that we're going to start with is called a random forest. Um, and as you may know, a forest is made up of trees. So what the random forest algorithm is, is basically 
an entire forest full of decision trees. So, and these are going to be automatically created based on the data you provide. So even if you don't like using this type of model, I think it's very interesting to run one and export your tree and look at where it's finding the most important breaks in the data. Because as you probably remember from our clustering video, we, uh, we kind of broke down and looked at like how much information we gained by having more variables, more clusters, less variables, less clusters. And we kind of hit that sweet spot of like the most information while being the most efficient is where we kept it. Decision tree is going to be very similar. It's going to have, you know, your, your starting stat, your breakout stat. Okay, so this would be a decision tree with two branches. First branch, second branch. Each branch has leaves on it. That's going to be what these rectangles are. And then in each one, it will be for a certain statistic that you provided. And let's say this one, and it's always going to be broken down this way. So the top stat is going to be the most important or where it gets the most information by making that break. So it'll scan through your data and it'll look at each stat and look at the end result. And it's basically where can we find a break point within the statistics that has the most meaning. So if you feed minutes in, minutes would probably be the top one, right? because your minutes are gonna be very indicative of how many fantasy points you can get, because you can't get any fantasy points if you're on the bench. No, there can be different levels of efficiency, and it's not 100% one-to-one, you know, minutes equal fantasy points, but it's, you can't have fantasy points without minutes, so it's a pretty good one. So let's say minutes greater than 20 is the first one. If you play more than 20, point, 20 minutes in a game, that's going to give you the most information as a starting point. And then from there, if your minutes are yes, you do. Oh, wow. Let's make that a little bigger. Okay, so yes, no. Yes, minutes greater than 20 minutes. No, minutes less than 20. If you go to no, okay, so out of the players that play less than 20 minutes, what's the next most important stat to break that down further? And from there, it could be, I mean, it really depends on what stats you feed. Since we start with minutes, we'll go ahead and pretend like we're just feeding it in box score information, which you can't really do because you'll need the data to predict that day. So that means you would need already the box score for the day to predict their fantasy point output, which would be useless because if you had that, you'd already know the fantasy points and the game would be over. But for just kind of un understand the concept of the tree here, we're going to use it. So let's say... If the minutes are less than less than or equal to 20 minutes, the next most important thing is points. Because like, you're probably going to have more people coming off the bench that are just kind of spark plug scores that score, you know, 5, 8, 10, 12, 15 points pretty quick, but they don't get a lot of minutes and they don't do a lot else. And we'll say points greater than 8, let's say. And then if you do score play more than 20 minutes, what is the next category going to be? And, I don't know, that's probably going to be points too, if that's how we're doing it. So we'll go ahead and do points. We'll do greater than 20. If you're scoring more than 20 points, you need to be following this line of logic. If you're scoring great, more than 8, you need to be following this. And you're going to keep just going down the tree like that. And you can specify how many branches there are, how many leaves per branch, how deep it can get. Like that's all stuff you can specify when you set up the, the model. <clears throat> but the end result is getting to a point that gives you a little predictive value. And this obviously would be an absolutely terrible model if you tried to build this one. This is just for comprehension's sake. This is not for use case. Okay, so let's say our model is allowed to go three levels deep and we want to end it here. And let's say that we are calculating the, the delta from their season average and fantasy points, okay? And we'll do rebounds less than five, 
The point of this is to break it down, and kind of like we did the clusters, we're grouping players into their playstyle cluster. Here, we're, we're finding patterns in the, the data we provide that allows, them, allows the model to estimate where they're going to be at fantasy point production-wise. So you can swap out minutes, points, rebounds with like opposing defensive stats, pace, any all those types of things is what you could be using instead of this information. But I wanted to keep it simple just to kind of go over the core concepts. And let's say that we are looking uh, how far off of their average they are. So let's say we follow this down. Minutes greater than 20, no. Points greater than 8, no. Yes. No, yes. Points greater than eight, no. Rebounds less than five, no. Yes, no, yes. So let's say rebounds less than five, yes. So we have less than eight points, less than or equal to eight points, less than 20 minutes, less than five rebounds. Let's say that's gonna result in minus three points projected than their fantasy average. And if they have low points, but they have, you know, greater than five rebounds, let's say that means they're going to score at their average based on this model. Less than 20 minutes, greater than eight points, greater than or equal to five rebounds, yes. Let's do plus five. Okay, so we have greater than eight points, but we have less than five rebounds. Let's say that gives us minus one. So more than 20 minutes, more than 20 points, less than eight rebounds. Let's say that gives us, oh wait, yes, less than eight rebounds. Let's say that gives us zero. And then less than eight rebounds is false. So we're getting more than eight rebounds. Let's say that gives us plus three. And greater than or equal to eight rebounds and greater than 20 points. Let's say that gives us eight points higher than our season average. And no, let's say that still gives us plus four because we're still getting up there in points and we can still have quite a few rebounds. So this right here is basically your quote unquote prediction for this example. So we would take this data out. We would see, we'd run it across the whole data, the whole lineup of slate of players for the day. In this instance, we are predicting their delta from their average amount of points or how plus or minus how far off their average they're going to be. So we can take that information and then you can do further analysis on that. You could only look at, like, if you can do a pretty good job of projecting whether they're going to be plus or minus their season average. You could just take that data set and then only look at the guys that are plus their season average because you don't want to play someone who's going to do worse than normal. So maybe you take those players that are all going to be pluses and you feed them into some other analysis and those are just the only guys you look at for lineup construction. You, you can, there is no singular model that is the best model. There is no singular strategy that is the best strategy. Your best strategies are going to be combining different methods as well as putting in a little of the old human intuition there. Like you, you can't rely 100% on these things. And just if you're going to go make lineups yourself without doing, you know, any research, just pick them every day. Yeah, I mean, by the law of numbers, you're going to win some eventually. And you're going to win some eventually if you just follow a singular model. Like it, it, it's going to happen just because of the odds of you constructing that many lineups and never getting anything are astronomically low. This is a good starting point. I think you can kind of see where we'll be going with this, with better data, more data, etc. This is step one. You gotta understand what we're gonna be doing and why. And random tree, that's not the only type of analysis. And I don't know if I actually explained what a random tree was. We just went through one force. So what a random tree algorithm is gonna do is it's going to run over your data set and it's gonna create n number of trees that we have here. And it's gonna take the weighted average of those trees. So it's going to create several different trees and several different starting points with different data set breakpoints and different stats that they use. And you can set like how deep you want it to go, how wide you want it to go. You specify all of that for each tree, or at least for the max. And then it spits out, you know, 300 decision trees, and it will take the weighted average of the prediction for that player across the board. 
So if you get one tree that's kind of bad and doesn't give you that much, if it's kind of an outlier and you get a bunch of others that are good, rest assured, taking the weighted average, you're going to be getting a better score for that player instead of a bad score. So all it's going to do is make a whole bunch of trees, creating a forest. It's going to be a random forest because they're going to have different start points on each of them and make the best tree they can based off that start point. And then just kind of squish them together and give you a weighted average. Um, not not terribly complex, but if you don't understand how the tree's built, it's easy to kind of feel lost while you're doing it and have no idea where that information's coming from. So that's going to be all for this one. Uh, we'll get into some actual code next week with some regression examples and kind of walking through how to set it up, um, kind of how we did for the clustering. That might be a two-part video. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how long it gets. So like always, if you enjoy the content, hit that thumbs up button and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Fun fact, over two thirds of you watching this video are not subscribed. Sad. So feel free to subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have ideas about how you want to model your data, let me know down in the comments. If you think you have a good idea for how to combine the human aspect with the modeling aspect for predictions, let me know down in the comments. Um, and, or where you draw that line on general versus specific, because that is a sliding scale that not a lot of people agree on, and it could be a whole lot of different things. So feel free to get some discussion going down in the comments, and we'll figure out where we want to go as far as examples on the channel to make it more meaningful for everybody if it's something that you're thinking about doing anyways. Thanks, everyone. See you next week.